ओम शांति श्री बाबा ने ब्रह्मा बाप के द्वारा हम सब बच्चों को अपना बना के शिव बाबा हैज मेड अस बिलोंग टू हिम थ्रू ब्रह्मा बाबा एंड एडोन दस विथ ऑल द वर्च्यूज श्रृंगार करके He has purified us because it is His promise that I have come to take you back home, and I will definitely purify you and take you back home. So these words cannot be of any human being. Only the supreme being can give such teachings and also make such a promise that I will purify you and take you back home. This is such a unique language. No one else can say these words except God. We say God is our Father. He is also our teacher. He is also our Sadguru. and in all three forms he adorns us he instructs us and makes our life so beautiful before we came to baba before we got this gyan we did not have any aim and objective of such type we were actually wandering around in darkness of ignorance we did not know who god was we did not even know the self we did not know from where we had come and why we had come that too we did not know yes we were doing our daily activities because no one can stay without actions we were performing actions but without any enlightenment we did not even know what are good actions and what are bad actions what is what we should do what we should not do we didn't do anything and this is we just did what came in our mind and that's why our actions became sinful actions now baba has given us the deep secrets of the philosophy of karma baba has said children Yes, I teach you how to live in this world. What type of actions to do, and what are wrong actions which you should not do? Why you should not do those actions? Because you are my children, and uh, only those human beings with devilish sanskars do those actions. As you are my children, you are the godly children, and as godly children. you need to have godly virtues divine virtues that's why we say that baba has really worked so hard upon us to make us so worthy uh, today i'm going to tell you uh, tell you some Uh, beautiful instructions which baba has given to us and uh, so as uh, i tell will tell you the instruction i'll also tell you some incidents when when baba said these words and what was the occasion and so on because that's our aim is it not to become like baba we saw baba and baba ke gun saath try to become like him baba would like that you also become like him of course she baba is incorporeal and he descended in the body of brahma but that was something incognito which not many understood only we children understood this but from brahma baba's activity we could understand the big difference that came in brahma baba's life after shiv papa entered in his body we could visualize we could experience the, the extent of purity in baba and made that made us realize that he was no ordinary being no human being could speak the words which we used to 
he have uttered through Brahma Baba's lips because when Baba would say, come child, come lovely child, come sweet child, there were many who were older in body than Brahma Baba too. And actually when, if somebody older than me would be there, I would, I would pay respect to that person and address him that way. If it would be someone younger than me, then I would address him that way. But if someone is older than me in age, I would address him in a different way, wouldn't I? Uh, so, but then, when God comes in this world, how does he look at his children? He sees his children in their original form. He sees us in the form as we were at the beginning, as when we were in the soul world. So Baba has actually given us a vision of all that too. So whatever words Baba would utter, they had so much power that whoever heard those words realized, that realized them instantly. There was so much purity in Baba's words and eyes that the impact would be so strong, like when Baba would say, sweet children, sweet children, can you ever say like that to anyone? Okay, even if a small child in front of you and you will say, sweet child, but then it's only once or twice, maybe a day, but here Baba would tell sweet children, sweet children, thousands of times during the whole day, from morning till night. In this way, he would give us so much love by saying, sweet children, sweet children. He actually made us so sweet and enabled us to finish all our weaknesses, our impurities, the filth, the the, the, the hardness in us and made us realize that we are Baba's children. We became aware that we belong to this Baba as we had belonged to him in the last Kalpa. The recognition came instantly. We used to just look at Baba and keep on looking, keep on looking at Baba, but feel that we had met Baba so many times in every kalpa, in, in the last kalpa and in every kalpa. So it was the recognition of the previous kalpa that we had met Baba before. And therefore, so many children would just go and cling Bab, to Baba. You know, and Baba would uh, Baba was, uh, just pat on his back and say, yes, Baba, child, you have now recognized Baba, haven't you? You have now achieved Baba now. And then Baba would try to separate the child from him. But then, um, but then the child would, would hold Baba so strongly that, that he would not like to be separated. So, you know, every day we would have that feeling, that experience, like in the day before yesterday, Smurli Baba said that Baba is such a sweet father, this, the soul should just cling to Baba, just hold Baba for good forever and not leave Baba. So that was the experience we used to have. And then our encounter with Baba, we would be so intoxicated, so intoxicated that sometimes we would uh, not get sleep and we would not even care of what people would tell us. They would say, you are mad. They would say all those who go to this organization, are, they become mad and they would say, Oh, this one is also going, that one is also, also going, as if we have done something very bad. But um, but we were unaffected because we knew that we were doing the right thing. They used to tell us that you are mad, and we used to tell them, well, we are mad for a purpose, but you are mad without the purpose. So as we have recognized God, and therefore we cannot leave God, you may beat us, you may even uh, uh, give us poison to drink, you may want to kill us, but we will not leave Baba's home. So they saw the, f the deep faith we had in Baba, they tortured us at the beginning of the yagya, they put us behind walls, 
they call even magicians, you know, so that um, they used to say that this Baba has put magic on these ladies, these children, these daughters, and now you must remove that magic which is which they have been affected by. But then we knew this is God's magic. There could be no higher, no better magic than this, and no human magicians could remove that magic or that enchantment. We told them, okay, do what you want to do, but we know what type of magic this is. So they saw the result that no one could move us, no one could shake us, no one could take us away, and uh, no one could make us forget Baba. They used to say, what has this man done to these uh, young girls, young sisters? But we knew it wasn't this Baba, Brahma Baba, who had done it. It was Shiv Baba, the incorporeal father, whose wonders they were. And because Shiv Baba made us belong to him through this one and showed us his wonders, they were, that was like godly uh, magic. Baba's magic of love in his eyes, on his face, which made us just be pulled towards Baba instantly like needles towards a magnet. So after we became Baba's children, we even even uh, though it's 67 years, but we still feel that we are still students, still children, we are still in that same intoxication. Then people afterwards, when they realized that we wouldn't move, we wouldn't change, they gave up and they said, they actually blessed us that, okay, you may you get success in this venture of yours. So. The 14 years which we spent in, were the was spent was spent in, in so quickly that because we were lost in God's love, though we used to do karma, you know, karma yoga, but then even then we used to do that with so much love because we knew it was for God and. Uh, Mama and Baba used to sit with all of us and uh, we used to chop vegetables or maybe maybe even uh, clean the grains. We used to cook chapat, make chapatis. So even Baba, Mama would be with us and that made things so easy because we would do everything so enthusiastically as Baba and Mama were doing it with us. So it's just like, you know, when someone someone is swimming in the ocean, he he feels so, he feels that he's uh, getting so strong, you know, while swimming in the, in, the, in the sea. This is how we used to feel. We feel so strong, like swimming in the ocean of peace, swimming in the ocean of love. And uh, Mama and Baba were like benefactor souls for us and they were our mother and father, and we were their most fortunate children. So those 14 years were spent like, we felt as if they were like 14 weeks or 14 months, and uh, we did not have any waste thoughts then, we did not have any otherworldly thoughts. Though of course some sanskars would be faced, but then because of love for Baba, we could change ourselves very easily and the feeling was as if Baba was moving us. We were only instruments and Baba was work, doing all the work. Baba the Karan Karavanhar was getting everything done. And as we had achieved everything, we did not want anything more of this world. Sometimes we there was a time when we did not have money in the yagya and not enough money, you know, to spend uh, very easy, very openly. So we used to be very, very stingy sometimes, eat only once a day, eat just little, and, uh, and be in our own intoxication. But then, 
we did not feel hungry, we did not even have the thought that we need more food, we never remembered anything low cake or anything of this low cake world. So we would go wherever Baba would take us. So Baba would take us to so many places in Karachi where we lived, but it was only uh, no, there were many, many interesting places to to visit in Karachi, but Baba would never want to take us everywhere. He he would only take us to the seashore and would say, children now sit on the seashore and talk to Baba facing the sea. So just our home and the seashore. We didn't know any other place of Karachi. We were 14 years there. If somebody else would be there, he would say, what is this, just in one place, not going anywhere else, not enjoying life, not, uh, um, not, uh, not traveling anywhere. But then, no, this was Baba, Baba's love, and Tapasya, and those 14 years was spent. So, but at every step, we got so many instructions because Baba and Mama were sustaining us. They were our teachers to do, teacher too. So, and they were our guides. So, like they were guiding us towards the soul world. So, they acted like in all relationships with us. And we used to sit in solitude and talk to the self, talk to Baba. And then we would ask ourselves, while talking to the self, am I doing what Baba wants me to do? Am I fulfilling Baba's hope? Am I uh, overcoming what Baba wants me to overcome? If I'm still having that sanskar which Baba does not want to have in me, then I need to make more efforts. Then I, how will I go back with Baba? Therefore, I must finish this sanskar. And therefore, we used to, you know, like sit in a furnace of yoga. Baba would, my mama would signal to us children, you should not have any devilish sanskar. Those are sanskars of Ravan, but you are the children of God. And therefore, I have brought something in writing which I would like to share with you. You could note that down. And Daddy has something in writing about all the instructions which Baba gave to us. If you like, you can write. Yes, if you like, you can write so that you can share that with others. The first lesson, not only Baba gave the knowledge of that, but then Baba became an example himself, set an example like a role model for us. The first was, first is practice of soul conscious stage in every action whilst being in the body to be detached from the body. Just as I'm sitting on the sofa, I'm very much aware that I'm sitting on this chair, but I'm not the chair. So I am that soul seated in the body, but I'm not the body. I am a subtle, tiny, point of divine light and might. So I have to see myself again and again in that tiny point of light and might stage. I am detached from the body. I am detached from the body. This body is perishable. This body is made up of five elements. It is insentient. But in this insentient body, I am the living soul. That's it's because of me, the living soul, that this body seems living. The eyes sparkle, the lips can speak. But the moment I leave the body, this body is completely dead. 
will be dead is called as a dead body, a corpse, because the life has gone away from it. So Baba would make us experience this so clearly, so clearly. Baba would say, sit in solitude and go within and check. In the knowledge, in the mirror of knowledge, see yourself. So Baba would make us learn this lesson every day, every day. He would tell us every day to go and sit in solitude, maybe on the seashore, maybe on the rooftop, maybe in a garden, anywhere, but sit in solitude and churn within the self. And the second point, be God conscious. So consider yourself to be a soul and remember me. So first is consider yourself to be a soul, different from the body. Second is consider yourself to be a soul and a child of the Supreme Soul. God is my father. Just imagine what a great con consciousness this is. And which type of father he is? The ocean. So vast, so vast, so deep. And I, as a soul, am like my father. Now, this is the third intoxication, third instruction. I am, I, the soul, am like the father. I'm not just the child of God, but I'm like the father. You know, Baba used to teach us at that time, just as the son of a dog, the child of a dog is a dog, and he will only bark. But the child of God is like God, and therefore my behavior has to be like God. And as God is the ocean of peace and love, I too am the master ocean of peace and love. So first point was, I'm a soul. Second is, I'm the child of God. And third is, I am, as I'm the child of God, I'm like God. As God is a seed of the tree, I am the master seed. I have the knowledge of the whole tree. And then next, Baba would say, child, Consider, not only consider yourself to be a soul and the child of God and like God, but then you're also resident of the soul world. Just imagine, just as, for example, you're sitting in this hall and then you leave this hall and go down, but doesn't mean that you forget that you were sitting in this hall in Baba's remembrance or listening to the class or Murli, whatever. Similarly, the fourth point is, I. I'm the resident of that home, and I was there, and I'm going to go back there. And I, and I will be there with my father in the soul world, so close to the father. This is like a, a new knowledge. No one ever told us like that before. It's not that in any scripture that you will be with your father in the soul world, in a soul form. So Baba gives us the real knowledge. He makes us soul conscious by giving such type of knowledge. And then also the method of how we have to remember him. Also, he has told us about our home. You're the resident of the soul world. So return to the return to Paramdham, the soul world. Whenever you get time, just go to Paramdham. I dwell there, I dwell there, I belong there. But then that is, will be possible only when there is soul consciousness. That is, the first three practices are there, then this fourth practice will be there. Somebody lives in London, someone lives in Bombay, somebody lives in Germany. Instantly he will remember from where he has come and he, how he has to go back there. Similarly, my my intellect should go instantly to the soul world because I belong there, I come from there and I have to go back there. Then the next point, Baba would say, children, renounce the consciousness of all the bodily religions and relationships too. That is also very important because all these relationships of 
are of the physical body and once the soul leaves the body these physical relations relationships don't exist anymore you know this morning i met a family and uh, I, f I saw that a uh, whole family was very sad, very sad. I asked what happened. So the mother, she brought the photo of her son who was lost, actually. He did not return home. He who had not returned home, and there was no trace of where he was. Maybe he was kidnapped, maybe he was killed didn't know where they were they couldn't even find his body and it and a number of years have passed so they have given up and they think that he must be dead now so they are so sad so sad that they could not see his their child they could not meet the child so that made the whole family so sad so i was telling to them well now what can you do the only thing what you have to do now is to say that my part or the that soul's part will with me was only fit to that Baba much extent only. And Baba is telling us anyway that we have to return home, we have to return home. Because she was saying, I don't know where he is, he's lost. Maybe he is killed, maybe. Now we don't know anything she was saying. But now what can be done? That's number of years which have passed, you know, and he's not found yet. And if he is to be found, it will happen, it will come easily. He will come on his own. So as I went on explaining, explaining her, her face, uh, you know, cleared up, cleared up, and a smile came on her face, some peace came on her face, um, some joy came on her face. So it is all, you know, all in your mind, all in your thoughts. So when she got the power of pure thoughts, pure feelings, the change came on the faces of all of them, the whole family. And then the next point is, always remember, I was so, a um, soul who has come alone. And when I go back, I will go alone. No one will accompany me. Nothing of this physical world will accompany me. So as nothing is going to accompany me anyway, then why should I have attachment towards anything or anyone? So Baba made us practice this in a real way, in a practical way, that I'm only a guest here, I'm only a guest here, and I've come here to just play my part. All these are my other actors who are, who are playing their respective parts too. I have come and I too will go. They have come and they too will go. And why have I come? I have come only to play my part, and after finishing my part, I will return home. So use this knowledge in practical life. All these points are to make us strong internally. And we have to become strong and with that strength do actions to the body. Just as I was, you know, telling about this family. Sometimes many um, families come because the child is dead. Well, this is a game, is it not? This is a play. This whole world is a play, a drama. And in this drama, we are all playing as act like actors. This is a drama of happiness and sorrow. It's a it's a play of of victory and defeat, of praise and defamation. So everything is relative in this world. Therefore, uh, everything has to be accepted in that way. That nothing is constant. Nothing will stay in this way forever. Today someone is born, tomorrow he may die. So everything is changing. But in the soul world, I have no birth, no death. I am an eternal, immortal soul beyond these opposites. Here these opposites are inevitable, therefore I have to face them. Therefore I should not be afraid of these opposites. And the result will be that 
everything will change just like if somebody is playing the role of Ram and Sita they play such wonderful roles they play the role so well so well that we do feel oh this one really is like Ram and Sita but Sita or Ram who are playing their role know that they are acting this role only for two hours and once they finish they <laughs> Sita, who plays a, you know, the actress who plays the role of Sita, in the in the drama she is playing so beautifully. But once the play is over, she'll go out and even smoke or maybe drink. So, and when she will come across that person who became Ram, she'll know he's also an actor, he's not the true Ram. So in the same way, we are all actors on this world drama stage. No one is my partner forever. No one is my companion forever. Therefore, why does the sorrow come? Because the attachment is there, and the attachment is because the thought is that this is mine and the, the string of attachment is tied more and more. But Baba has detached us from everything. You are a point of light, no? You are living. This physical body is non-living. And the, the moment we think of this, we feel that, oh, all this is just so temporary. Everything is so perishable. This has actually helped so many souls. It has freed souls from sorrow. So much sorrow one can experience if this knowledge isn't there. Therefore, Baba has given us the knowledge of the drama to in such a strong way, child, this has happened, okay, drama. Forget the past drama, don't remember the past. Whatever happened yesterday, well, it's finished. In yesterday's date, whatever happened, happened and it's finished to be uh, rolled back, uh, it's, it's put back in the role and it will be played again in after 5,000 years, so not anymore in this cycle. So every day moves and it doesn't come back, not each moment is like the other moment in this cycle. Therefore, I have to see each one's role very uh, as an observer, as a detached observer. Yes, if something has come in my way, make use of it, play with it, and then in a second be detached. Or some physical ailments come, okay, accept them. An accident happens, accept it. Anything uh, happens. Accept it. It has happened. Even if it's a very bad illness, so what? Well, the, the ultimate that could happen out of that is the result of that would be death. Now, what more could there be? It doesn't matter. But I am eternal, no? I am detached from the body and see this body. Uh, I already have so many this physical bodies, already so many illnesses. One more illness doesn't matter. Why do I have to worry about it? So in this way, we use the knowledge Baba is giving me. So many treasures, I have to play with those treasures of knowledge. These treasures make me strong, make me powerful. So play with those treasures instead of worrying about all these little mundane trivial, trivial things of this world. It's, uh, and sometimes we, we experience sorrow because we're not happy with our part we are playing. But that too is because we are not detached observers of our part too. We know everything of this world is perishable. We know every scene will pass by. It won't come back in this way. It will come back only after 5,000 years. It won't come back in this cycle. You never know what ha will happen any, at any moment. So be prepared for the worst. Be prepared for the best, but still be a detached observer of both. This helps us to make our stage very, very stable. And then the next point, Baba says, children, this old world which you see, you have to not see. 
so it's such a big thing to see and not see so much is happening in this world and to see and not see so what does Baba's knowledge say? See and don't see, but what to keep in the intellect then if not to see, so that we are not able to see all this. It's as good as dead. It's finishing. It's ending. Destruction is round the corner. It's at hand. It is very imminent. So why? be attracted towards it. Why even want to taste it? Like, for example, someone is, is leaving the body and the doctor tells his relatives that he won't stay long, he won't be long, now finish off all the karmic accounts you have with him, detach your mind and whatever other procedures you need, you finish off because he won't stay long. So then the mind gets detached, yes. I am go this one is going and therefore I have to be detached. Similarly, Baba says, you know that this world will change very soon and therefore you should not be attracted towards it at all because you have to return, you have to leave from this old world and therefore remember the new world where you have to go and then as Baba says, become unlimited renunciates. You are unlimited renunciates, unlimited. You must have unlimited disinterest. You don't have to be like those sannyasis who leave their family and their home. You know, many sannyasis, they come back to the house after having become sannyasis because the attachment pulls their minds back. They say, oh, let me go at least once to see my wife, to see my children, to see my family. Because before, you know, when they renounce, it's, an, it's a, like a disinterest for everything, and they just leave the house and go away. But then afterwards, after they become sannyasis and they stay in that stage for a few years, and they are pulled towards the, their families, then they come back. But Baba says, yours is unlimited disinterest, unlimited renunciation. You don't have to renounce anything physically. Even this physical body is like a dead body, and I'm in it, just looking after it. It's dead. It's finished. It's, uh, so if I think something is going to be destroyed, then I will not be attached. But if I say this is mine, then the attachment will come. That's why Baba says, see and don't see. Then Baba has said, take yourself beyond all limitations, limitations or barriers of religion, caste, creed, sect, color, relations, so many limitations in this world, so many bondages in this world, so many uh, these limits are there. And people say, this is mine and that is yours. So yours and mine, no, we have to finish of all these limits and become and become and can come in the unlimitedness so unlimited power in me unlimited home of mine unlimited father of mine unlimited uh, uh, role i'm playing so everything in the unlimited form then as next, as Baba says, as we are the true children of the true Father, there should be truthfulness in us completely, inside, outside, should be the same, that is, completely transparent, we should be completely honest, there shouldn't be anything to hide. Truthfulness, honesty should be in our veins. 
because truth is our decoration. Truth and purity go together. Without purity, truth is not possible, and without truth, purity is not possible. Therefore, purity and truth in thoughts, words, and actions. Where truth and purity are there, there the vices cannot enter. This is why Baba says, whilst living in this impure world, you have to be immune from these vices. That's why Baba talks about eating pure food, being in pure company, being in pure places, in holy places. So you don't even have to go to a place where there's impurity, no need, no need at all. Don't have to mix in the company of uh, people who are not pure were not holy. So you have to choose your company. And also, next Baba says, in action, you have to be egoless. In thoughts, you have to be incorporeal. In words, you have to be, sorry, in thoughts, you have to be incorporeal. In words, you have to be egoless. In actions, you have to be viceless. And when, they, when we're incorporeal, egoless, and viceless, then we can be detached and loving very easily. Next, very interesting. Children, you have to conquer death. What does it mean? When Baba says you have to conquer death, well, everybody has to die at the right time, wherever he may be, if he's to die. That death doesn't see that he's in the train, he's in sleep, or he's walking. He, it doesn't see that. It doesn't say, OK, let him reach home, then I will take him. No, wherever I may be, even the train, if I am in the plane too, it can happen anywhere. But what does Baba mean when he say you have to conquer death? That means I should not consider death to be death. This is just change of costume, is it not? People call it death, but we don't say it to be death because we know that the soul never dies. So this word death doesn't exist in the Brahmin, Brahmin dictionary. It's just say leaving the body relinquishing the old coil like so so conquering death means or means no fear of leaving the body no fear of death at all because when the right time will come i will leave it's like when you are ready and you have already packed up and it's time to leave you leave is it not that so you don't have to feel sorry for that you'll be unhappy about it the next thing, Baba says, you are the hero, hero in actors of this world drama. It's such an unlimited drama, millions and millions of actors in this drama, in this play, in this movie, it's like a movie. And I am, but I am a very special actor actor, I'm the hero actor. God has made me a hero actor. Before, we used to see others and maybe we felt superior or felt inferior while seeing them. People also saw, saw us in that way. They would say, oh, these people, they don't, they're not enjoying the worldly happiness, the worldly joy. So let me tell you, how we had to face all these things when we came to Baba. At the beginning, people wondered what we were doing. They did not like us, like our ways. But now they are realizing, they realize, they say that you people have done a great thing. You have made your life. We have only ruined our life. So we tell them, we tell them that we don't have to renounce everything. Love is not bad. We love everyone. We love a, a each and everything. So love is not bad. But then 
the attachment is bad, the greed is bad, the, the vices are bad. So, even if somebody is behaving very well with me, it doesn't mean that I have to become attached to him. No. Yes, he gives love, I also have love for him. But then a second, I should know how to be detached. See how Brahma Baba became. He was also attached to his family, his children. But then once Shiv Baba entered in his body, never, never for once did he ever say, this one is my wife. This one is my son, you know, my never came, Baba's, Baba's. That is giving an incident of one soul who came to Baba. And, um, you know, he asked Baba, Baba, who are your Lokik family members, he asked. And he said, Baba said, come, I will, I will tell you. So, and then Baba's daughter-in-law was sitting. Baba's daughter was also sitting. Baba looked around and said, who are my Lokik family members? Actually, it was as if Baba had forgotten that they were his Lokik family members. Because he asked, but Baba kept on looking around, who are my Lokik family members? So Baba, Baba had actually gone beyond the Lokik family completely. Though they were sitting in front of them, in front of him, but he wasn't attached at all. If someone would get sick, maybe it's Baba's own Lokik daughter, but then Baba would not say, oh, she's my Lokik daughter, therefore I should be more concerned, and that one is not my Lokik daughter, and therefore I should not be that much concerned. No, it, Baba would have the same concern for everyone. Baba would go to the the children who would be ill. So it's, it wasn't because of some lokik relationships he would go, but all were Baba's children. That's how, that's why Baba went to meet them. So Baba was completely beyond attachment and the embodiment of the elevated consciousness all the time at every moment, at every step. When Baba left, he renounced, he renounced for good. Baba had such a beautiful house, but instantly Baba renounced. You know, Baba lived in Hyderabad, Sindh. He was a jeweler. He had such a beautiful house. He was a very big businessman. But then when he to renounce, and they all went to Karachi, instantly he renounced. Not even once a thought came in his mind, oh, how can I renounce such a beautiful house? Baba's Lokik wife also had great attachment to Baba because Baba gave a lot of happiness. He never gave sorrow to anyone anyway. Um, but, and his Baba's Lokik wife had so much attachment towards him. But when Baba became detached, she had to become detached because uh, she used to see Baba in Vishnu form, in Krishna form. And you know, how could she see her, him as her husband? Instantly, as she would take Dishti from Baba, the thought would come, he's my husband. But like in the next moment, she would see him as Krishna. Then how could she ever think that he was, that she was his, her husband? The thought of that she's my husband finished very easily because of the visions she saw when she looked at Baba. One of Baba's daughter had so much attachment to Baba. And uh, she too, when she was not in, uh, she didn't understand this gyan very much. But then when she used to see Baba, Baba's stage would be so high that from his stage only 
the children learn to be detached, the lokic children. Baba did not have any trace of anger in him. We lived with Baba for so many years, but Baba left anger, means he left anger forever. He left greed, he left greed forever. So, till the end, Baba had, Baba had to face so many obstacles, but he remained unshakable, immovable in his stage. Om Shanti.